Coming up today, we take a look at the Grammys. Your TV was watching you. Make sure you look before you paste. And Facebook thinks it knows who you are. All that and more coming up next. And it's Grammy season once again. This year, depending on your perspective, we had some winners. It looks like Star Wars The Force Awakens won Best Score Soundtrack for Visual Media. That's a great win for the movie industry. And once again, John Williams. And yet another Grammy for the composer of much of the Star Wars music. As a reminder, we have to go all the way back to 2012 when... Uh, Austin Wintery of uh, the composer of Journey, which is a video game, was nominated again in December 2012. Doesn't look like any video games were nominated this year, but we will take Star Wars The Force Awakens as a close second. Remember back a couple years when you had friends telling you that your TV was tracking you? Well, it looks like they were right. CNET reporting that Vizio will be paying $2.2 million for tracking what you were doing. The FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, said on Monday that it and Vizio had come to an agreement to be paying $2.2 million to settle charges that Vizio had installed software on customers' TVs, allowing it to collect data on 11 million TVs without the consent or knowledge of its customers. This settlement stops the unauthorized tracking that Vizio has been doing and makes it clear that smart TV uh, makers should be getting consent before collecting of any type of data like this. So I guess we can conclude, even if you were reading all of those contracts that are pages long, that no one really read on screen, looks like they were still going to track you anyway. The Verge also has a story on TVs tracking you and... If you hadn't heard me say it, we'll definitely say it now. Most of your smart devices, TVs, uh, DVRs, cell phones, most likely they're tracking you, whether you know it or not. Become very familiar with those settings, especially in the advanced menus. Some of them uh, have the ability to turn off tracking. Some of them don't. Even when you don't allow tracking, sometimes they still do. So make sure you're very aware your TV is probably watching you. This next one comes to us from Life Plus Linux. It is entitled, Look Before You Paste from a Website to a Terminal. So if we look at this very innocuous command, ls space hyphen lat, which would be a simple command that most people I don't think would copy and paste. But hey, let's say you're being lazy today and just feel like copying and pasting. Well, you should be very careful. Here's a little... Uh, animation of what that ls space lat really turns into so again we've spoken about hacks before and here's another one that someone has come up with so using so using some parameters that are hidden in the website what we see has been done is the font size has been turned to zero the position of the font has been moved off screen and we have all these added commands that you don't see in between the space of the ls and the hyphen lat so whenever you're copying and pasting off of the off of the internet off of an html web browser off of a web browser be careful you could get more than you bargain for if you remember seeing our last episode we talked about people making the autofill screen obscure again great little hack Just be careful. You have more people that are finding out how to use these tools in a malicious way. Could definitely ruin your day. Be careful out there. ASR Technica reporting that some researchers have found out it is now easier for to fingerprint your online presence even if you use multiple browsers. So usually people will think that turning on the private browsing or using a different computer, a different browser can help you become invisible on the internet. 
researchers in a collaboration paper named Cross-Browser Fingerprinting via Operating System and Hardware Level Features has shown that you can actually more accurately predict and fingerprint a browser. The new tracking device that the researchers have been using relies heavily upon JavaScript and it seems to still be inaccurate against Tor browsers. While not inherently bad on its own, this type of fingerprinting can lead to advertisers being able to follow you even across multiple browsers. I think I've definitely said it once before and I'll say it again. Be careful what you do online. And moving on to fastcodedesign.com. As we just mentioned, you want to be careful what you do online. That includes Facebook. There's a new tool out, it's a new Chrome extension, that allows you to find out exactly what Facebook not only knows about you, but what Facebook thinks it knows about you. So when you're on Facebook, Facebook watches not only what you type, whether you hit enter or not when you type it, but what you like, what you dislike, what other websites you have open when you're browsing and you have Facebook open on the background. All of these personality traits, things you click, how long you look at something at a particular page, where your mouse drifts to are all compiled and run through code that then tries to decide and correlate, figure out and see if it can figure out something about you. This, of course, mainly done for advertising. There's a great small video on the Chrome extension called Data Selfie. I highly recommend if you're a Facebook user, you grab the Chrome extension and take a look. At the very least, you should watch the two-minute video. It's a great two minutes, shows the kind of data that Facebook collects on you, what it thinks it knows about you, and I think quickly becoming the mantra of this podcast, be careful what you do online. And from Cointelegraph.com, we have a bit of a follow-up to the rushing hacking and Kaspersky story. As previously reported, the four men, one of them working for Kaspersky Labs, have been arrested in Russia on charges of treason. If proven guilty, the men face 20 years in prison, which is a standard sentence for treason in Russia. Sadly, there will be a limit to the knowledge we get out of this case as the FSB, or the Russian version of the FBI, holds its trials in secret. There have been rumors that the arrest of these men was actually part of a cover-up that is being initiated by the Russian government. Again, we will keep you posted on any new news that comes out about this case from Russia. Want to end today reminding you as always to please go visit the Electronic Frontier Foundation. If you have the means to do so, please donate to their cause. They are a great organization that is ensuring our freedom in the new electronic frontier that we have in front of us. If you blog, if you podcast, please, it's in your best interest to help these guys out to ensure that we have the internet free and safe tomorrow. Thank you for listening. If you have found what you heard today interesting or helpful, please give us a thumbs up. If you know someone you think might find this interesting, please feel free to share it with them. If there's a story that is out there that I missed that you think should have been covered, please let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for listening and have a good day.